Captain. I was expecting it to be one of the historians with you. But a Vulcan? Explain yourself, Mr. Scott. Son? I don't know what's going on, but the first officer of this ship will be treated with respect. Captain, I assure you, no one has ever treated me otherwise. Who are you? Well, I thought sure you'd know Thalen by now, Jim. He's been your first officer for five years. Captain, I have come to the conclusion that this is not a game. No, but if it's reality, what happened? Risk. Risk is our business. Out there. That way. was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it sits. Rock and roll! Six. We're not afraid of diversity. We don't persecute it. We embrace it. At least I won't die alone. Federation of Planets. And reach for the stars. Those were the days. Program complete. Enter when ready. Welcome back to another Re-Trek review, where each week we talk about Star Trek. And this week we're sticking with Star Trek the Animated Series and covering episode two, entitled Yesteryear. Yesteryear first aired September 15th, 1973. It was written by DC Fontana and directed by Hal Sutherland. DC Fontana is a, a writer and consultant from the original series. She's always a welcome sight. Yeah. And I almost think Hal Sutherland will direct all of them because I think he's like one of the executive producers of Filmation. Hmm. The synopsis for Yesteryear is Spock travels back in time to prevent his death as a young Vulcan. So before we move forward, we'll cut over to Caleb and ask what Caleb thought of the episode. It was the worst thing. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was great. I liked it. Good. I very much enjoyed it. I was happy to see DC Fontana's name in the opening title. Yep. And it makes sense because the episode was about Vulcan stuff. So, yeah, she's kind of like the pioneer of uh, all the Vulcan kind of backstories and stuff. Yeah. I think like Theodore Sturgeon like wrote Amok Time. But she's yeah. definitely the one to like take what he wrote and like expand Brought it to it. life. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a fun episode. It's definitely probably the strongest episode of the entire series. Mm. Just the most just, relevant. Yeah, most relevant, most like impactful, most probably slightly even most interesting. You know, in a sense. Yeah. It was interesting seeing um, the doorway yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It's interesting that now all of a sudden they can just tell it a specific time and date. <laughs> yeah. They don't have to jump through and randomize it. So that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of perfect. Like We can... Uh... We can get into the review. We had no new public subscribers or any comments, so we can move on to the review. Yeah, so we already kind of talked about it. Um, after the, in- the intro starts, we had, like, you see the Guardian of Forever. Yeah. And then here is where we got uh, Dr. Ray's character, or no, Aurelian. Then I don't say it, but obviously it's in the script. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is where the bird character comes from. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was pretty cool seeing the Aurelian. Yeah. Like you said last week, like now it's animated and now like here's all these crazy um, (laughs) alien guys that work on the Enterprise. They've been there the whole time. 
Don't even worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even later on seeing an Andorian was cool. Yeah. I thought the altered history of Sarek once he they returned once <laughs> Kirk is like like what are you talking about, Bones? Like we're, yeah. just, we're just going back to the ship, and then when they give like Sarek's background, I was like, that's it's interesting, like what they decided to do, you know, kill Spock off at like seven years old and then have his wife die in a shuttle accident. And like yeah. Yeah, yeah, just very interesting. And he like goes on to be like in charge of a ton of stuff after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of interesting, I thought. I like that though. Um I liked how when they came back, nobody, you know, Bones was like, uh, Jim, who's that? Who's that guy with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, very funny. And he's like, I've, I've never seen him. I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> yeah. And then they like use the computer and the computer's like, oh, yeah, there's nobody. No Spock. <laughs> nobody named Spock in Starfleet at all. <laughs> it's like, wow. He's like, why do I remember? I also thought Kyle shaved his mustache, but then I realized that it was uh, Scotty. Yeah. Because <laughs> at like first glance, they just kind of show him from far away, like beaming him in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no mustache this, this week. And I was like, oh, no, that's OK. That's, that's Scotty. That's, that's Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So the really funny thing is, is in last week's video, I put little things like you have in your video in the past yeah and um one it's not it's not a company in canada it's a company in reseda california okay and uh the second thing was is uh checkoff isn't in this at all okay walter, great walter koenig doesn't isn't doesn't voice any of the characters <laughs> great <laughs> i did think yeah. that the like thing about Selick and Spock's past was like a kind of like a little like eh, it was a little like I don't know I like it but at the same time it was like so Spock has gone through this whole time re knowing that his cousin saves him yeah and then he and then all Kirk says to him was like well, did your cousin look like how you did right now? And he's like, I believe he did. And you're like, why are you just putting this together now, Spock? Like, Yeah, right. I know. And the way he was describing it made it sound like, you know, an Obi-Wan Kenobi situation where just this oh. random guy in the desert, like, saved yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm one of your cousins from long away. And he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, all right, we'll see you later. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah. no, no, no. He he stayed with them for like a few days and had dinner and <laughs> <laughs> right was yeah. like around for a while, you know? Yeah, he was there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that too, because even when he gets there and he's like, He's like, oh, you're doing your trial tomorrow, huh? And he's like, oh, no, that's not for another month. And he's like, oh, how could I have miscalculated the time so badly? And he's like, oh, that's right. I ran off into the wilderness by myself tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. How could I have? I've forgotten that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, Spock wipes out like his entire childhood is what we're, yeah. what we're led to believe, you know? Right, <laughs> right. It was the it was this thing. This is the thing I liked. Like he goes, hmm, and then he goes. Like the hand comes <laughs> up. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I do like the animation this one sometimes. Yeah. When he when Kid Spock is like running through the desert and it's just his silhouette at night. Oh yeah. That was pretty comical. It's like <laughs> shaggy. He was like shaggy yeah. running through the mansion. Is he on a treadmill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, that was pretty good actually the one really thing that I enjoyed um, was that Thalen I I really enjoyed it was cool yeah how Thalen was like well by you going in there it means I won't exist anymore 
but like mm-hmm. but I hope your mission goes well. And then Spock's like, well, that's not really typical of an Andorian. And he's like, no, we're a warrior race, and of course we want to like fight for survival, but yeah, family but also family. comes first. I thought that was cool. Yeah. This change in the timeline will put you in my place. Yet I'm not aggrieved. Andorians are not known for their charity. True. A warrior race has few sympathies. But one we do possess is for family. In your time plane, you will live, and so will your mother. That is valuable. Live long and prosper in your world, Commander Spock. And you in yours, Commander Thalen. And it was neat, because now you also... Because you think about it. We watched the original series. I think there's Andorians like in a couple more episodes, but they're like background characters, right? Yeah, they're like on their way somewhere else, or the ship is transporting them, or right. And you get a couple of lines like "warrior race," they're aggressive, and then this is you know like now he says this thing, and so you can see like this is how they built Shran. Like they mm-hmm. use these things to be like. He's militant, but he's really big in family, and yeah, so. Yeah, and he will repay a favor for a favor. and Right, right, exactly. I think Star Trek does it mostly where it's like, hey, so we're timeline adjacent, and if my timeline is, you know, like, mine's the right one because it has a TV show around it, but, like, you're going to not exist after I fix the timeline. <laughs> and they're like, that's totally fine. That's okay. Totally fine. (laughs) You know, I've always felt like I'm not even supposed to be here. (laughs) It's It's all because Kirk couldn't live without everyone knowing his friend Spock. Yep. But yes. So as, as it concludes, it is very strange that they now can ask the Guardian where to go and not just have to try and guess and jump in. Yeah, right. I thought that was pretty, pretty weird. Because at first I was like, oh, that's the Guardian. And then they were like, they're like, all right, I would like to go to this time and date. And I was like, well, so it's not the Guardian then because <laughs> yeah. that's not how the Guardian works. No. Well, the funny thing was, is I, I, I was, I thought about it and then I read it in trivia where it was like, they couldn't, they didn't get the guy from the original, the voice from the original episode where he's oh. like, behold, you know, like that. <laughs> get that guy so it's just james doing it's scotty doing like an old man like like oh I... the portal is open <laughs> like <laughs> i was gonna say i liked i like this voice of the guardian maybe they maybe they just wore him down they beamed down this that lady yeah. and the bird were like nope you're gonna what? let us do what we want he's like please no, they almost make it sound like they literally just go there to like conduct historical mission, like you know, yeah. research. Yeah, yeah. like uh, they do this all the time now. <laughs> yeah, which is like why it like the ramifications of that is so. Oh yeah, like clearly, bad, right? You know, they're like, I don't think we did anything in there, <laughs> and then immediately everything's changed, and you're like, what? I know, and it even ends on this note where they're like, oh well. I'm sure losing a pet's not going to really affect you. And he's like, I don't know. They could have changed the entire course of history. (laughs) Yeah. It's also a little sad. I I was a little sad that, like, they didn't at least kind of, like, sort of nod to Kirk that, like, he was, like, sad or hesitant to go in there because of Edith Keeler. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of just bring in the fact that, like, he's a little... He's still like hurt from it, right? Like it's oh right, yeah, yeah, right. It there was no. Well, apparently, what we're supposed to believe is that okay. So he, young Spock, decides to run out into the middle of the night and then gets attacked by the La Macha, Macha. and and he he gets killed by that thing. And yeah. then it's documented that he dies during the whatever it was called, like the Kazwans, whatever. And then it's like, oh, he died during this maturity ritual thing. Right. But future Spock is supposed to travel back in time to prevent that. And because future Spock was in Orion's past with Captain Kirk and he didn't couldn't travel, go, he didn't go at the appropriate time. Right. That's right. So 
it kills so Spock dies and then is safe because he's in you know it's time travel nonsense so now he's safe because mm-hmm. he didn't really die yet and blah, blah whatever so it's like it's a really convoluted way to get <laughs> Spock to travel back in time yeah right because on and they're right. I read in the trivia thing they were like this. This really should have been like in the original series, like a much longer episode. Because like the proper way to do it would be like Kirk comes back, he remembers Spock. Nobody else does. Spock doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. He finds out the information about him, and then like he travels to the past to get like to save Spock. You know, type of thing. Right. But they wanted Spock to be in the past to have all these like. To build on the stuff of Journey of Babel between him and his dad and his mom and all that stuff. So, yeah, I thought his dad was a lot more like nice to him yes. than we've seen. You know, yeah, and they it, and they kind of touch on it is that um, you know, like whatever made Spock and him like fall apart like hasn't happened. So Sarek is a little more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think honestly, right, their relationship is bad because Spock join Starfleet and doesn't join the Vulcan right. Academy that his dad, you know, right. did. So this is the halfway point, so go down to the comment section and write Thalen. Give Thalen some love down there. We want to say how cool he is. So yeah, you so know we- what else? is yep. funny is like the Christopher Pine movies and stuff. I remember like seeing mm-hmm. and like, so, you know, Leonard Nimoy has an appearance in that one. Yeah. And he's like, Oh yeah, I've traveled through time basically to give you this message. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I thought that, you know, at the time I, th- I was like, well, that's just a way to get like Leonard Nimoy to be like a, you know, <laughs> Oh yeah. Just to be in the, in the movie. movie. But yeah, Going back and watching like the original series, you realize like they time travel all the a time. Lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They're always time traveling. Yeah, so it really wasn't weird that he was in the movie. Nope, totally made sense. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, so we come back from commercial, and yeah, we talked about it. Sarek is back in the episode, same voice actor, which was great. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't. Rec- I didn't. Yeah, I didn't so recognize guy. without seeing his face. Yeah, I think Mark Leonard is his name. So yeah, he returned to play. I didn't get Jane. I think her name is Jane Wyatt. They didn't get her to play Amanda. She she was busy. So it's just Angel Barrett. Yeah, but that was really cool. And like you said, he was. I really enjoyed too that like he was different. Yeah, <laughs> there's that scene where he goes, he's talking to him. He's like, ah, oh, yes, very good. And he like stops and looks at him, and mm-hmm. talks like, what's what seems to be the problem. He's like, well, for a moment there, you seemed familiar. And he's like, well, yeah, there must be some sort of familiarity with the forefathers. And he's like, no doubt. No doubt. (laughs) He's like, yeah, we're related, idiot. We're cousins. Yeah. (laughs) But we also get in this scene, and I I didn't write it down. Maybe maybe it's in the notes. No, they don't. I don't think they have it in there. But he says it. He says, like, the two names. And it's basically like, Mm. Some sort of relatives he names like a man and woman name. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, well, that's me. Yeah, like on that side of the family. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I do remember him saying that, but yeah, I couldn't tell you who the names were. And I thought it was cool because it's like you're essentially getting like more Spock's relatives, basically. Yeah. I like seeing Spock get like bullied as a kid. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, was... to, your, to your point about the Chris Pine movies, like that happens in the Chris Pine movies, but it goes differently. Because mm-hmm. he's down in like the he's in like the little learning machine, and obviously he's not like practically naked in the in the movie. And uh, <laughs> the kids come up to him and they say terrible things to him. And then Spock, like he gets a hold of one of the kids, and then he starts to like beat him. Oh yeah. Where in this one he misses. Yeah, and you know what's funny about that scene is like they're all like berating him for having emotions. Meanwhile, they're like showing extreme hatred for him. <laughs> yes. So that's children. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I know. And then I like that when like Sarah comes up and he's like, I'm sorry you had to see. Sorry you had to witness how emotional my son is. Yeah. <laughs> and then he says something like, well, that is how children are. It, it, it will not be discussed any longer. He's yeah. Like, Very good. <laughs> but then you get to see. I try. Yeah, that was cool. I that was cool. Honestly, getting to see his uh his saber tooth. Yeah. Because you always hear like references to yeah. it. The, the but getting to see like Spock's actual pet was cool. Yeah, because they bring it up in Journey to Babel that he had a pet say lot and it was mm-hmm. like an overgrown teddy bear. And then Spock's like, no, it isn't. It's not an overgrown teddy bear. It's a bones. And then you see him here. Yeah. You are too old and fat to follow me. I try to go home. <laughs> I didn't want to see him die, though. Well. That was nice. Yeah. Thanks, DC Fontana. Well, <laughs> we're going to get into that, too. And did you like, uh, did you like Spock Vulcan neck pinching the Lamacha? <laughs> yeah, that was great. The La Mancha was cool. Yeah. Uh, even though they just reused um, animated Godzilla <laughs> sound effects for it. They absolutely did. Yeah. That's a, that was in trivia, was that it was just... <laughs> this looks like it grabbed Godzilla. Yeah, from the same studio. Movie. Yeah! Same studio, so they're just like, uh, just use the Godzilla sound. I no, Nobody will know. Nobody watches those things. No, nobody's <laughs> watching this crap. It's been around for almost twenty years. It's nobody's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I try uh, being struck with the poison was a little sad. Everything has poison in Star well, Trek. It has to, otherwise yeah. it's pointless. Otherwise, it's not a threat. <laughs> oh, he's gonna bite me. Whatever, poison. Yeah, oh, who cares? Yeah. I liked Spock's like interaction with like everybody, mm-hmm. like how he still has his tricorder that he's like hidden somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, Captain's log. I, I shouldn't be here. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. I. Eh? It's a very straightforward episode, and it's like yeah, it's I don't know. It's good. It's decent. There's not a lot of filler. No, really, not really. It at gets all. right to the point. You get right on, right on schedule all the way through. Now it's time for trivia. Oh, not again! <laughs> all right, now you're overacting. <laughs> so. It says writer, the writer of yesteryear, Dorothy D.C. Fontana, mm-hmm. was a writer and story consultant for Star Trek: The Original Series, and also served as the story editor and associate producer of the animated series. She said, "When I came to the animated show, I wanted to do at least one script. This episode is the only one she wrote for the animated Star Trek." Mm. Yeah, she's like, which one are you doing anything with Vulcans? And they're like, this one. And she's like, got it. Got it. Mine. That, that's mine. <laughs> it says, Dorothy Fontana pitched the story to Gene Roddenberry, who approved the pitch. Inspired by one of his guidelines, Fontana tried to utilize animation in such a way as to show a more expansive portrayal of the planet Vulcan than had previously been possible. She said, Mm -hmm. I was mindful of Gene Roddenberry's rule that writers must take advantage of the enormous range animation gave us in terms of sets and aliens. Animation would allow us to show the planet Vulcan any way I saw fit. Although it had been established in a muck time that most of the planet was desert, I wanted to depict other aspects of Vulcan. Fontana also mused, We never really could show Vulcan on the original series, except in a muck time. We had a ceremonial circle, very small piece. We could show the whole planet of Vulcan and a lot more of it in the animation. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to do the story, she concluded. I realized that here was a way to tell a really nice Vulcan story in a way that would look good 
it was an absolute ideal way to show Spock's backstory because of the freedom that the animation allowed us. For instance, we could show a great deal of Shikar and the surface of Vulcan, the desert, the city and environment of the home, and the strange creatures that live there, the Lamacha and the Salot. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. That is uh, very funny to me that like, so like if you're an animator and mm-hmm. like you hear everybody, like all the writers and you know, they're <laughs> like, oh yeah, they want us to you, do, you know, basically the sky's the limits. <laughs> right, right. Whatever we say, you have to draw. That's the rule. <laughs> like, wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Bigger, more, more. <laughs> more greeblies yeah, more right. space <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was cool no i i that's like the first thing that like stood out to me was like getting to see more vulcan Absolutely. and like spock's home and stuff i thought that was really cool yeah it's great and it's just it kind of stinks that like we i mean you get a little bit with to paul like you, you get some stuff yeah. when she goes home but even yeah. like strange new worlds like when he's when spock and uh to oh, they're, they're on that. they're on their date yeah. yeah, and like, and then he's back in the house, and it's just nice. Yeah, it's cool. like I was listening to our, I think Savage Curtain podcast, and it's just like we were talking about when they show, um, Sirac, and it's mm-hmm. just like, like, why, why doesn't any of the producers and writers like give more rich backstory and back like telling of Vulcans? It's it's very much the same thing with Yoda, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone oh, yeah. loves Yoda, but you have no, you have like very little information about his people. Yeah, he's very mysterious. And it's the same with Spock. Everyone loves Spock, but you have very little background about Vulcans. So. Yeah, I don't know why. Just funny. It's just really funny. Fearing that children would be upset by the depiction of euthanasia, NBC executives wanted the ending of this episode changed, but Dorothy Fontana refused and Gene Roddenberry supported her decision. NBC's concerns were voiced by the network's standards and practices departments after the episode's outline was submitted to the network. Andy Mangels explained the death of Spock's pet, pet Salot was something that NBC was absolutely freaked out about. Like, <laughs> how do you show the death of a pet a child's pet. How do you do that and not traumatize your audience? But remember that filmation had complete creative control and the deciding factor was if Gene Roddenberry approved it, the network had to go with it. Yeah. So get bent. (laughs) Years after the incident, Fontana reflected, Gene said, trust Dorothy. She'll handle it. NBC thereafter <laughs> followed Gene, uh, Gene Roddenberry's advice, allowing the example of euthanasia to be shown. Noted Fontana, I really appreciated his confidence in me, so I handled it, I think, in a sensitive way. However, not a word was directly passed from the network to Fontana herself, who later commented, there was never any discussion at any time that the story was too adult for a children's audience. Having had past experiences of losing pets of her own, though, she was nevertheless aware of the feelings involved in such a loss, and she knew she had to handle the issue delicately and sensitively. Despite NBC's initial nervousness over how controversial the euthanasia in this episode would prove, the television network never received a single letter of complaint about the story. Decades. because nobody watched it. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Decades after the episode's broadcast, Fontana remarked, we did not get one letter of complaint, so apparently we did it right. Fan reaction did, however, concentrate on the thrill of viewing some of Spock's backstory. Fontana mm-hmm. commented, the response I did get most often, and it has been consistent over the years, was that it was the one chance fans got to see Vulcan and had some insight into what made Spock Spock. A little yeah, bit of... obviously it's like obviously it's sad, you know. Right, right. But 
it's not just like just for fun killing off an animal just for fun it's uh right. storytelling and uh, it's right. an important part of uh spock's childhood yeah it also just like i don't know it really makes it it makes it a lot more heavy too because then he because young yeah. spock says so that's like his dad's too like his dad had it when he was a kid yeah right right and then when he comes back and his, he tells him and it's like, but Sarah goes and he's like, well, we'll retrieve the body and all this stuff. And it's like, it's like, it's emotional for him too, even though he's a Vulcan, which I, I appreciated. Like they didn't. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I like it. I like it. The fact that a long shot of Shakar portrays a huge planetoid in the Vulcan sky, despite the script having specified that the planet Vulcan was to have no moon was a mistake made during production. DC right. Fontana reflected, frankly, it was an error on the part of the animation house. The problem lies in the fact that once past the storyboard, no one, no artist, ever referred to the script or descriptions. A preliminary drawing of the long shot included the huge orb in the sky. Both Gene Roddenberry and I noted no moon, all caps, on the sketch when it came to us for approval. Someone didn't get the word, and the final print shows that satellite in the Vulcan sky. So in the Naked Time, I forget which one it is. One of the original series, um, Uhura, he's ta- Spock is talking to Uhura, and he says Vulcan has no moons. Mm-hmm. And so now they're in the thing, like, don't put a moon in there because there's they don't have one. So the reason I brought it up, because, like, who cares, really? But the reason I bring it up is you now fast forward time and you're in the Chris Pine movie and Kirk lands on the ice planet and he's running away from the monsters and he gets inside the cave and there's old Spock. And it's like, wow, yeah, right. old Spock, who, how are you? What, whatever. And then he's like, yeah, it's like Nero deposited me here so that I could watch the destruction of my home world. And then it's like, but how are you watching it? Because Vulcan has no moons. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. That was like one of the big complaints that people were making. Like they play pretty fast yeah, and loose with they, all that stuff. Yeah. So that was trivia. I wrote, mm. I really enjoyed the healer Vulcan. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. The fact that Spock did a practical joke to him like two years ago. He was like, not yeah. going to forget that. That made me laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Aren't you the son of Sarek and you do that earthling thing where called a practical joke? He's like, that was two years ago and I only did it once. It's <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. really funny. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. I enjoyed that. I liked his design too, like uh, he had a full like beard and everything. Oh yeah, it was an interesting choice. Yeah. So the other funny thing was, since he doesn't come back, Thalen's like not back when when Kurt, when Spock comes back. And I was reading a thing was, um, I forgot what other thing I've read about, but they sometimes had with coloring things. They had issues with like coloring things. Hmm. So the bird originally was supposed to be like a blue green hue. They're real or mm. a, a really and a rolling, whatever. That's yeah. what it was supposed to be, but they didn't do it, so they just made him yellow. And then the Andorian is supposed to be blue. Thalen is supposed to be blue, but he's like this really like pale gray. grayish. Yeah. It was again just like an issue with the coloring. They just couldn't it's they weird. didn't I forget what the reasoning they gave. But the thing that, that I thought was interesting is there's a there's a couple novels, I think, yeah, where they kind of touch on some of the stuff. They basically say that, like, uh, Thalen is like Hemmer. He's like half. He's like Anar or like half Anar or something. Mm. Just this is an I interesting thing. That. Yeah. Funny when they come back and Bones is like, oh, so you find the back from your vacation, huh? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, that's what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's totally what was happening. Totally it, yeah. And then even Spock makes a joke, you know. He's like, wow, that's weird. And he's like, yeah, only time. <laughs> only time. Time will tell. 
And it is interesting because it's like, oh, well, what did the death of Aichaya do to the timeline? Yeah, I don't know. And it's like, I, I'm not sure. It's like, Spock, uh, Kirk's like, well, that shouldn't really affect anything, right? And then Spock's like, well, it did the one person. It meant something mm -hmm. to one person, you know? And then you're like, hmm, I wonder what it really changes. So it's almost like anything from this episode forward, if it's slightly different, it's like, well, it, the timeline changed. <laughs> yeah, I know that is interesting. I wonder if anything changes from it. I don't think so. I mean, the reality is, is like, of course, stuff changes as the series, the franchise goes on, but like, they never obviously refer to it being the fact that they traveled back in time and changed things. Right. And how would you know? Right. How, how right. Would you also know? that. Right. I liked it. I liked Spock heavy episode. I liked time traveling. I liked seeing the guardian again. Well, Hey, that, that was it. the review. So let's go on over to do the thing that everybody's been waiting for. Caleb. Caleb. So, Caleb, who gets the Erica Ortegas Award for being the most unlikable? I'm going to go with the Kid Vulcans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Bunch of little jerks. You filthy half Terran. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're wearing like the most ridiculous yeah. clothes I've ever seen. You know? We're not going to comment on <laughs> the like, battle ready, half naked children. Yeah, and like the high boots. I don't know what I don't know why. Like the heel like boots with heels, like in the desert. Like okay. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna make fun of Spock, really? Yeah. If you look yeah. in a mirror, buddy. <laughs> you don't even know how to do the basic Vulcan neck pinch. But I will go and experiment on them. <laughs> Yeah. Where, where are you going? That was funny. Thing? Yeah. I have some school business to attend to. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I'm going to go kill all the bullies. <laughs> See you later, oh. father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so long, father. So Be long, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be home before your mother has prepared dinner. It will my be cousin has given me agreeable. newfound knowledge on how to destroy my enemies. <laughs> so long, father. <laughs> <laughs> I want him. To, he just has. He just has the Spock's phaser from the future. Phaser, yeah. 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 Okay. Who gets the Elizabeth Cutler Award for being most forgettable? Let's give that to the bird. Ooh. Yeah. The bird man. Yeah. It was cool to see him. But he stood there, didn't say anything, didn't get a name, and then was gone. Yeah, I think like in the script, he's like Olik Ohm or something, but it's like... Yeah, cool. Olik Ohm or something. Yeah, I don't know. Don't but, care. Right. Okay, what gets the Mugatu Award for being the best alien of the episode? Oh, that's easy. That's the uh, Godzilla ripoff. <laughs> La Macha. La Macha. It's funny too that it was ends with matcha and it was green. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, and this is a time period where people weren't like obsessed with matcha. So, it's well, <laughs> Americans weren't obsessed with matcha. Yeah, matcha, matcha. Yeah. Plus, it's a Godzilla screaming thing. So, right? <laughs> yeah, gotta that's get great. behind that. Yeah, who gets the Trip Tucker Award for being the MVP? Spock. Time, current current Spock. timeline Spock. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was great. I want to go to Vulcan 30 years past in the month of Tasmine. I would like the time portal to move now. Yes. I would like to time travel now. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's like, other than maybe Kirk like pushing the envelope to get things to change, but like Spock had to go and actually do it. So, yeah. Very yeah. Good. Well, this might be an easy one, but what gets the Shran Award for being the best action sequence? Gotta be Spock jumping <laughs> and giving the death pinch from above. Yeah, totally. I thought that was pretty good. It was pretty good. 
just imagine being young Spock and it's like this cousin just appears for like one day. He's like, hello, I am a cousin of your father. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he eats a meal with you and he hangs out. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to go be a man and be out in the desert. And then all of a sudden he just leaps out of this thing. And he's just like, and he's like, very good. And then you never see him again for. Yeah. You're like, what a weird, what a weird day. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, um, I almost be, almost would be funny if uh, the RPG had that thing like uh, in Fallout, like if you use the perk Mysterious oh. Stranger. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Funny. So it'd be yeah. really funny if, like, in the RPG, you could have like a talent <laughs> of Mysterious Time oh, Traveler. God. That's really and funny. And it's just you. It's just you in the future, like yeah, coming in and making sure, <laughs> like taking extra shots. I and never thought the about thing. that. He does the thing from uh, was it Billy Madison? He does the Steve Buscemi thing when he shoots. He does like the, yeah. the nothing nod, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he leaves. I never thought about that in this episode that uh, Spock is the mysterious stranger. He really is. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking at first I thought you were going uh, in Vegas. There's a perk um, like wacky wasteland or whatever, and like oh, stuff. Wow. You know, you see like like alien ships crash and yeah, yeah. You see all this weird random encounters and stuff like just wacky stuff happens. Yeah, there's like a Monty Python reference too and stuff. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. What gets the NX award for some sweet ship stuff? I don't know. It's probably a cop out, but I just enjoyed seeing more of like Vulcan. Yeah. Like out. the planet and homes and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, that yeah. kind of goes under technology. Totally. You don't really see the ship. It's the same stuff you always see. They beam out. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Vulcan City is good. That's. Yeah. I like seeing his house. Okay. What gets the Porthos Award for being the cheesiest thing of the episode? Spock. Kid Spock running through the desert <laughs> is like Either so wet, I thought it was very funny that classic like Scooby Doo like running through yeah. doorways <laughs> I totally know what you mean yeah I thought I thought too it was very jarring I was like oh yeah like okay yeah yeah that hustle like yeah where they're moving their hand sideways <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, what gets the Enterprise Award for being the best scene of the episode? I like uh, President Spock, like, talking to his dad. Mm, yeah. Specifically the end when he's like, you know, I really can't thank you enough for, like, saving my son. And he's oh, like, well, yeah. I'll just try to understand him in the future. And he's like, that's a really weird request. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. You saved my son's life, Selick. There is no way I can fully repay you for that. Try to understand your son, Sarek of Vulcan. It will be repayment enough for me. A strange request, but I will honor it. As long as he joins the Academy and follows my footsteps, there will be no issues (laughs) moving forward. No problem at all. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. (laughs) What a strange request. (laughs) That's, that's, That's weird. Why do you care? That is so that is really funny though. Like I've never really thought about it. Is like he he has these feelings about Spock and like you know his emotions and his human side. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, idiot, you're the one that married a human. <laughs> I what are you it's your fault, you know? <laughs> and you're like you want him to be a Vulcan like you, but also like he's being taught by his mother and you and it's very confusing for him and it's like your fault that he's like this right yeah like what are you doing dude Mm. let's go take your take your pill somewhere (laughs) (laughs) okay so that was what caleb thought so now it's your turn to go down to the comment section and write what you thought of the episode let us know down below 
Next week's episode, we're sticking with the animated series. Next week's episode is the Lorelei signal. Mm. Yeah, so as always, if you like the video, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it. Don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Share it with all your friends and family and Trek enthusiasts. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode and ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss this podcast, the Star Trek history, or anything else that comes out on the channel. But before we conclude, you can always hop on over to Caleb's channel. Caleb's channel is a prop building channel with some podcasts with him and I talking about other things not related to Star Trek. No. So you can always go over there to have more content. He's got a lot of videos out there. And as I we always say, never talk about Star Trek. Never, not even once. And <laughs> um, if you've, you know, he's got a lot of builds over there, so you can hop on over and maybe find something to make or just watch him make it from your favorite TV show or movie or video game. He's got a lot of stuff yeah. over there. Let them know, Caleb, if you got anything coming down the line. Mm. A few days ago, I had a new video. I made the fifth element stone. I made mm. the fire stone By from out. fifth element. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. It's a fun little build. All of May is Alien Month, so um, I I made Hail 9000 from Space Odyssey. Then I made the Firestone from Fifth Element. And uh, yeah, the next two for the month are, are from the Alien movie. Primo. So stay tuned to those. Those are pretty sweet. Absolutely. You can always go over there, give him a like, give him a subscribe, give him a comment. You decide. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for doing all the fun things and watching along. This has been the Retrek Review. So, Caleb, send us out. Computer and program. See you guys.